Riot Control trotted through the halls of the hospital and sat on the first chair he found. He was still trying to get his bearings after the fire. He could still see it. Pegasi diving into the flames to rescue foals. Bleeding Minette, trying desperately to get to the camp before Nurse Redheart pulled her away. Caratop, injured but try crying after she realized her daughter wasn't among the survivors. He shuddered. He still had to go to Dr. Tulip. The worst nightmare was going to come true. He'd see Ginger Snap's body lying on the ground on the odd sopsy table. He raised his head and saw Front Kick approaching him. His usual smile disappeared. He was carrying some papers, which he put on the coffee table next to Riot Control. Did you find her? The old guard asked. Front Kick nodded. It got complicated, he said, sitting on the chair. Riot Control blinked and looked at him. What do you mean by complicated? She called an attorney? No lawyer, lawyer will help her. No. It's not that. Frunkick replied. I have... doubts. We found her napping on a tree not far away from the meadow. Slightly hungover. Do you think she'd be there if she did that? I don't know. Rye Control shook his head. If I recall correctly, she's kinda dense. You mentioned she said that she wanted to burn some bat pony's house, but then she someone stole her kerosene, right? Indeed, she's not the sharpest tool in the shed, Frontkick said. But even then, she seems wise enough to not sleep in a place where the fire could have easily spread. And if we're to believe the toxicology reports, she wasn't that drunk to just pass out there. Rye Control rolled his eyes. And that's not important, he said. We have a can of kerosene with our hoof prints. She wanted to kill a bat pony. Now imagine a jury consisting of, uh, ethic minorities and angry housewives. They'll make pillows out of her feathers, he said. Not that I have something against that. Frontkick looked at him nervously and levitated one of the papers from the table. I checked that can again, he said. Her hoof prints aren't the only ones there. Sam and Tiara took her saddlebags and checked their contents. Everything was in place. She looked around her room. It was as clean as it never was before. Then she sat on her bed and looked around again, checking every corner of her room. She sighed with relief. Curtain call was nowhere to be seen. At first, I'm and Tiara thought about a long, warm bath and a razor blade. How did Sunshine call it? Along the way, not across the street? Something like that? But then she reconsidered that. It'd be a messy death. Messy deaths were good for blank flanks. She wanted her body to be pure. No traces to wash off. She'd just die and let the ponies forget about her and move on. She took the rope out of her saddlebags and smirked. There was some poetic justice about it. Dementiara heard that if the rope didn't break a pony's neck instantly, the death was long and painful. He remembered exactly how Zipper Will had thrashed, trying to catch some air. Dying in the same way as her seemed like a good idea. She wanted to feel pain, be punished for her deeds. Pipsqueak, Ruby, Alula, Twist, and Zipper Will didn't deserve what had happened to them. But Diamond Tiara was a different case. She wanted to die in the most painful way possible. She put the rope back into the saddlebags. Then she took the letter from the drawer and placed it carefully on her bed before leaving the room. Riot Control stared at his assistant in disbelief. Another set of hoof prints? He asked. Whose? I don't know exactly, Frontkick replied. They seem small, as if they belonged to a filly? He scratched his head. Suddenly, an idea appeared in Riot Control's mind. He remembered all the deaths about the past murders. Something was wrong. When Pipsqueak died, he said slowly, whose hoof prints were on the crime scene? Pipsqueak's? Frontkick replied. 
his friends and some other kids. Right control slammed his hoof against his forehead. Remember the place where Ruby fell into the water? Whose hoof prints were there? Ruby's. Front kick said, scrunching his face. And a lot of kids' hoof prints. They play there often. Exactly! Rag and Troll exclaimed. And how about Twist and Alula? Well, we discovered them later, Front Kick replied. The dog, zipper wills, and vinyl scratches. But she made them when she went in after us and lost her lunch when she saw the bodies. There was molded prints, but I assumed they were twists. Never mind, Rag and Troll said. You like patterns. Can you see the pattern? Well, not really? Front Kick replied. Am I missing something? Rag Control straightened in his chair and looked into Front Kick's eyes. Well, missing's a good word, he said. Something's missing from the crime scenes. Think about these hoof prints. What's missing? A spark appeared in Front Kick's eyes. An adult! He exclaimed. All the hoof prints belong to foals. Some kids killing them. Silver. Silver Spoon put down a book she was reading and opened the door to her bedroom to hear her mother better. Yes, Mom? She asked. Can you go to the market to buy some apples? Silver Spoon sighed and rolled her eyes. She slowly got up from her bed and trot downstairs, where Silver Speed was waiting for her. I'm not sure if there'll be any pony at the markets, Silver Spoon said when her mother gave her the money. During such heat, no pony wants to get sick. Then you'll go to Sweet Apple Acres, Silver Speed replied. It's even closer than the markets. Yes, Mom, Silver Spoon replied, sighing. Sam and Tiara looked around. He climbed up the hill and inhaled the air. The weather was hot. A light breeze was rustling the leaves of the apple trees. Sam and Tiara could still smell the smoke coming from the outskirts, tarnishing the beauty that, of that remote part of Sweet Apple Acres. Sam and Tiara looked around. The place looked good. It was far from any buildings. It was green, full of grass and flowers. The smell of fresh apples was overwhelming. Sam and Tiara could hear buzzing of the countless insects and birds singing cheerfully. She sighed and walked to the nearby tree. Its branches looked strong enough to withstand her weight. Not far away from it, she found a trunk of some cut-down tree. Even though someone had dug it from the ground, it was quite heavy. She pulled it and placed it below the branch. Then she put her saddlebags on it. Whistling some happy tune, she took the rope out of her bag and began to tie a noose. When it was ready, she tied the rope to the branch. What are you doing? Curtain Call asked. She was lying in the grass, rubbing the suntan lotion on her body. None of your business, Damantiara replied. She checked if the rope was firmly attached to the branch, then she stood on the trunk. Don't do that, Curtain Call said, watching her with a smile on her face. We still don't have all the actors to do our pageant. Not my problem, Damantiara muttered, putting the noose on her neck. I don't know why you bother. You don't even exist. Yet you're still talking to me, Curtain Call smirked playfully. And I do exist. I'm just in Trottingham. So lonely. Then go back there and stop pestering me, Damantiara exclaimed. Think about it. Suddenly, Damantiara felt that Curtain Call was next to her. I'm a product of your poor, sick brain. Some part of your mind that makes you walk at night, killing ponies. Still, I am part of your mind. You don't want to do that, Diamond Tiara. I want, and I will, Diamond Tiara exclaimed. She bent her knees, readying herself to jump off the trunk. Nothing happened. Her muscles froze, keeping her in place. See? Curtain Call's smile was so wide that she could see all of her teeth. You don't want to do that, Diamond. Evan Tiara grit her teeth. She tried to jump, but Curtain Call was holding her. Get off me! She exclaimed. Evan Tiara, what are you doing here? Evan Tiara blinked. 
She looked around and saw Apple Bloom approaching her. Are you crazy? Apple Bloom asked. Get down. As you wish, Damantiara muttered. She took the noose off her neck and jumped off the trunk to face Apple Bloom. Curtain Call was following her. Why'd you try and do that? Apple Bloom asked, looking at the rope. I'm crazy and killed all those foals, Curtain Call prompted. She sat next to Apple Bloom and began to play with her mane. I'm cr- I mean, it's none of your business, Blank Flank. Devon Tiara muttered, shooting her a nasty glare. Blank Flank, how original. Apple Bloom sighed. Gorilla Diamond. And I bothered to save your life. Crazy. Curtain Call sang. No one asked you for that. Devon Tiara replied. Get out of here. It's my orchard. Apple Bloom said. It's Yahoo should get out. Get out! Evan Tiara exclaimed. Her pupils shrunk to pinpricks when she saw that curtain call rose and began sneaking to Apple Bloom with a rock in her hoof. Or... Or what? Or else I'll adorn the grass with the contents of your thick skull. Curtain call prompted calmly. Or I'll... Evan Tiara hesitated. Then she darted forward and tackled Apple Bloom, pinning her to the ground. She had to admit that she underestimated Apple Bloom. They rolled on the grass, and soon Diamond Tiara was trying to catch her breath after she had got headbutted in the chest. She grabbed Apple Bloom's mane and yanked it, pulling her closer. She felt the taste of blood in her mouth and realized that she was biting Apple Bloom's ear. Apple Bloom screamed and thrashed, pushing Diamond Tiara away. Then a powerful buck threw Diamond Tiara even further. She spat blood in a chipped tooth and looked around groggily. Apple Bloom was standing in front of her. Staggering. The tip of her ear was missing, and a black eye, and a nosebleed was forming. You're sick! She exclaimed. Then she turned back and walked away, limping. Now! Curtain Call whispered into Diamond Tiara's ear, pointing at the rock lying next to her. Letting out a powerful scream, Diamond Tiara rose and threw the stone at Apple Bloom. It hit the back of her head. It collapsed on the grass. Before she could get up, Diamond Tiara was next to her hitting her with bare hooves. Apple Bloom tried to shield herself, but one of the punches landed on her temple. She was lying on the ground limply with her hooves spread wide. Say goodnight, Devon Tiara muttered, rising the rock to deliver the final blow. It's not just some kid, Rye Control said. You were right about the hair. What? Runkick rose to his eyebrows. We found no match. We even took samples from foals. Yes, but only from foals who were in Ponyville at the time we started collecting them. Rye Control said. Shit. Runkick muttered. She has a violet mane. And she was in Trottingham when Zipper will... Exactly. Rye Control got up from his sit. Our culprit is Filthy Rich's daughter. Silver Spoon wiped sweat from her forehead. She was slowly climbing up the hill, panting heavily. She decided to approach the Sweet Apple Acres from the east, since it was the closest way from her house. Too bad, it was also the most uneven one, with a couple of steep hills she had to climb on. She was just thinking about taking a short rest when she saw some pony at the top of the hill nearby. She came closer. Two ponies were rolling on the grass. Silver Spoon blushed. She once overheard her mother saying something about the apples liking each other too much. She never thought that it would be this true. She was about to turn around and choose another way when she saw something else. One of the ponies just threw a rock at another. Silver Spoon darted forward. Help! She shouted, running up the hill. Some pony, help! One of the ponies rose a hoof with a rock, ready to hit the other with it. Silver Spoon couldn't see who it was as the sun was blinding her. She saw, however, that the mysterious assailant turned their head to her, threw the rock to the ground, and ran away. Panting, Silver Spoon reached the top of the hill. The assailant was nowhere to be seen. Silver Spoon galloped to the pony lying in the grass and immediately recognized her as Apple Bloom. She was lying in a puddle, but she was breathing. When she saw Silver Spoon, she tried to lift her head and say something. Don't move, Silver Spoon muttered. Calm down, Apple Bloom. 
I'll call for help. She looked around and spotted Applejack not far from them, bucking apple trees. She left her saddlebags with Apple Bloom and galloped to her. Miss Applejack! She shouted. Quick! Help me! Someone's attacked Apple Bloom! Silver Spoon? What are you doing here? Applejack asked when she saw her. Apple Bloom! She's hurt! Silver Spoon panted. A tarnation! Applejack muttered. Big Mac! Go and find a doctor! She followed Silver Spoon to the hill. Apple Bloom was moving. When she saw Applejack, she'd try to get up. Don't move, Sugar Cube! Applejack said. I'm with you. Suddenly, Silver Spoon saw something shining on the grass. She approached it and examined it closer. When she looked at it, she staggered, feeling the taste of bile in her mouth. She looked at Applejack unsurely, but she was too busy taking care of Apple Bloom to notice her. Silver Spoon picked up a piece of broken tiara and hid it in her saddlebags. Then she looked at the place where squished grass was marking the assailant's route to escape. Silver Spoon swallowed her tears. A piece of broken jewelry in her saddlebags was absolute proof. For a while, she was thinking what to do with it. Then she sighed and quickly ran down the path. Riot Control and Front Kick barely left the hospital when they saw a cart skidding to a halt in front of them. A couple of paramedics emerged from it, carrying a stretcher with an unconscious filly on it. Applejack trot behind them, not even noticing the guards. What's going on? Riot Control exclaimed. Another attack! One of the paramedics replied before he joined his colleagues. Where? Front Kick shouted. Sweet Apple Acres! The paramedic replied before he disappeared behind the door. Quick! Riot Control exclaimed. Maybe we'll catch her! The stench of smoke and ash was overwhelming. Silver Spoon could barely walk. Seeing the remains of the tents and scattered equipment, she could easily imagine what had happened here last night. It was easy to spot Diamond Tiara's hoof prints on the ground, but hard to follow them. Apparently, she'd been running in circles, stopping from time to time as if she was talking to someone. Diamond? Silver Spoon called. Are you here? Diamond? There was no answer. Silver Spoon trotted forward, tripping over a couple of pipes, the only remains of a bunk bed. She wiped the ashes from her face and continued to walk, calling Diamond Tiara from time to time. Diamond? I... I know about everything, she said. Tears were flowing down her face, leaving two streams in the soot. Diamond, please, come with me. Together we'll... we'll find the cure. Suddenly, she saw something pink hidden behind a pile of half-burned saddlebags. She trot there and saw Diamond Tiara lying on the ground, panting heavily. D Diamond? The Spoon cried. Are you okay? Get out. Diamond Tiara's voice was barely audible, a mechanical whisper. Her pupils were shrunk to print pricks. Her eyes were focused on some point far in the distance. No. Diamond, I can't leave you. Get out! Diamond Tiara yelled. Don't you understand? I'm dangerous. She's talking to me. I can kill you at any moment. You won't kill me. Silver Spoon exclaimed. Whoever she is, you can fight her. We're best friends, remember? <laughs> yes. Diamond Tiara sat down, resting herself against another bunk bed. That's why you should leave. I... I don't want to kill you. Silver Spoon approached her and pulled her into a hug. Come with me. She said, I'll help you. Once, Diamond Tiara muttered, once I thought I killed you, but it was Twist. Please, Silver, go away. I don't know how long I'll be able to, to control myself. I don't even know if you're real. I'm real, Silver Spoon replied, and I won't leave you. I don't want you to hurt yourself. I tried. I couldn't. Diamond Tiara replied. She was walking slowly next to Silver Spoon. Apple Blue tried to, tried to stop me. And look what happened. She's alive, Silver Spoon said. Listen, Diamond. I'll take you to the hospital. They'll cure you, but let me help you. Yes. Diamond Tiara staggered and fell down. She got up, holding a metal pipe from the bunk bed, 
using it as a cane. Good. Silver Spoon smiled. Just a couple more steps and we'll be there. Suddenly, her vision darkened. She collapsed, not sure what had just happened. All she felt was cold, spreading from her stomach to her whole body. Her heart was pounding against her chest, almost cracking her ribs. No! She heard Diamond Tiara's voice above her. Silver Spoon! I'm sorry! I'm so sorry! It's okay. Silver Spoon replied calmly. She felt Diamond's arms wrap around her. She didn't feel pain, just numbness. She looked down and saw a metal pipe protruding from her stomach. It's okay, Diamond. No, Silver, don't leave me! Diamond Tiara shouted, pulling her into a hug, smearing blood and ash on her fur. I won't leave you, Silver Spoon replied, watching blood sipping from her wounds. No matter what happens, I'll never leave you. She closed her eyes, her mind slowly drifting away. Devon Tiara felt her body getting colder in her hooves and cried, sinking her face into Silver Spoon's coat. Her screams echoed through the burnt meadow, soon reaching Ponyville. When Riot Control and Front Kick found her, she was still standing there, holding Silver Spoon's body in her hooves.